media and video games and everything about how the women are presented, about how the white people seem to be the ones who always get to be the focus or get to be the good guy. And that has been something that I have done for a couple of years now and have ratcheted up greatly in the last year with the election and all the things that have been on the news. And I, th I think uh, it's really exciting because I am giving them such a broad, solid foundation that I personally am still trying to get at age 44 in understanding what, like, you know, they, they, they smell a rat already and they're so good at pulling it out and saying, hey, wait a minute, this is BS. And it's like, oh, yeah, that is BS. So I would advise your listeners and you to talk about what you're seeing as far as the systemic stuff that's in our mass culture, you know, how are women treated and girls treated and how are boys and men treated in um, TV shows and movies and why are, and are the white people get to be the saviors most of the time. And, you know, are the black people always looking for the easy way out or whatever, just, just give them an awareness that they get to control what they take of those messages. I think that's really important. I love that, Carrie. That's great. Thank you. Why, thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say of even a simpler one. I'm going back to the family poster, but my kids really enjoy the coloring of the poster. And, and I love when, I love it because sometimes I go to these marches or the protests and I'm a little embarrassed by my own signs, but I am so proud to carry my children's signs. You know, so I asked, I just put the, the stuff out and, and say, make me a sign. And they all say like, love is powerful, or they just, you know, they just like to say sweet things. But then we start talking about what these means and, and talk about, you know, take back this idea of family values and really give them some great family values about fairness and love and compassion and every, you know, as much as we can do to teach them about empathy and to read better books. And, you know, if there's never, I don't think they could be too young to understand some sort of privilege, you know, to feel gratitude and to feel honored to have opportunities if we have them, if we're lucky to have them. We just had a, a discussion tonight at dinner about privilege. And it was really neat to hear them understand that what we take for granted, and that everybody can, and that's going to affect how they see the person who perhaps is homeless or to see, you know, to smell the fear that, that they're trying to peddle. Um, mm -hmm. So Carrie's was better. I love, no, better. I love, I love your, no, I was just sitting here thinking I love that because I mean, they really go hand in hand what we've talked about. I think as a parent, you should not be afraid to tackle the big conversations right. that, you know, obviously, you know, the age of your kid and you know, your kid's temperament and personality and anxiety levels, but there is always a way to introduce the big topics in a way that they can understand. And even if it is just like, you know, love everyone. And then you get to talk about, you know, why some people don't love everyone and why then that's important that we all talk about that and that it's something we should stand up for and never be silent about. And, you know, it, it comes easier too. I think I, Joanna will, back me up on this I'm sure but it com comes easier the more you talk with them about it too because then you have your you know your common vocabulary that you've built up with them but don't be afraid to dive in and and talk about the unfairness in the world and the systemic problems of the world and um, help them grow their ability to see that stuff how old are your kids my kids are six and three my six-year-old is very involved in all of this already he went to the Women's March in Chicago with me, and he's written postcards to voters, and he's sort of really super involved. Um, he recently made a video asking Hillary Clinton to come on the podcast. Uh, she, <laughs> she hasn't <laughs> responded yet, but <laughs> maybe. Um, if but she it's... does, we have, a, we have a book we can <laughs> Right. <laughs> But I'm still struggling a little bit with the three-year-old, you know, sort of introducing topics in a way that he'll care about, you know. Yeah. Sure. At so. that age, it's such a long, slow process. You know, you don't, yeah. at, least at my kid's age, you start to see the the payoff <laughs> of what you've been doing. <laughs> right. 
And the diversity in books for little kids. I think that's, that's yeah. a, an easy yeah. one, you know, and, and an exciting and a lovely one too. Mm -hmm. So um, I have an 11, eight and seven and they, they can be really clunky. You know, I should, we should mention that, that sometimes yes. the messages take some time to be delivered in a way that doesn't make you cringe, mm -hmm. but, um, but they're trying and they're sorting it out and they, they're not going to get it. You know, they're not, they're going to get it age appropriately and that's okay. You know, it's, that's an opportunity for them to say it and then you to explain it again. And I, you know, I haven't added my, I have two adopted sons and that I think was also one of the, one of the few things I know I did right was just introducing the vocabulary of adoption, for example, from a very early age so that there's a lot of openness and a lot of discussion. And sometimes it takes us places that I'm a little uncomfortable and they don't, you know, I shouldn't say that. I think it, it, we have conversations that make other people uncomfortable, but we, we know it's like a process. It's evolving. I can't expect them to know things and I want them to be open and, what, like what Carrie said, um, introducing a vocabulary as clunky as it is. And I'll tell you a story that you're probably not going to want to put on the podcast, but you're, you're welcome to. But um, I have two sons of color and they're you know, wonderful boys and they have a growing awareness of what that means, especially in a, um, my husband and I are white. And we also have a biological daughter who's white. And my six-year-old biological, maybe she was five, was trying to kind of, I don't know, she was trying to one up and he was trying to explain something to her. And she said, you know what? In the old days, I had a better seat on the bus. And I was like, what? I mean, I just ran off the road. I was <laughs> horrified. I mean, I was just like, what do I do? <laughs> and, you know, and then we all sort of said, what? And, and now we know that we have to revisit that conversation a little more often so that she doesn't have it out. But it's it was still a healthy conversation somehow. You know, she didn't. She just wanted to beat him at something and she doesn't have many opportunities. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The clunkiness is, it's just inescapable because they're always going to come at it, of course, with their innocent, you know, ways. And we pull in all of these like, oh my God, adult ideas of it. And you got to, yeah, you got to just steal yourself to go back into the fight. <laughs> yeah. I had a, uh, not quite the same, but an experience over this holiday break. I So, you know, we live on the south side of Chicago. It's a pretty diverse neighborhood. And we were in middle of nowhere, Ohio, where my parents live. And we went to church with my mom. My six-year-old was sort of looking around the church. And he goes, Mommy, I noticed that everyone here is white. <laughs> said, oh, my God, that's so awesome. Yes, it's it's very yeah. different than where we live. That, that's very true. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome that he can recognize that. I mean, I mean, not that. Yeah, that's great. I love I love just the idea of a child getting that much diversity because you don't you don't have that many opportunities, no matter what your intentions are. So that's great. We'll put a link up to the blog because I noticed a recent post that was about civic minded things you could do with your kids over winter break. Winter break, yeah. of course, is over, but I know a lot of our listeners have their kids stuck at home because of snow and cold right now. Joanna wrote that one, and she really hit it out of the park. It's such a perfect level of involvement in that, that post. I love that one. Thanks. I'm going to challenge Carrie now to write um, five things we can do to celebrate the Women's March. So I'm, I am very excited <laughs> to be writing that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I said, I think this fits the themes of our podcast perfectly because I have from the very beginning cared a lot about parenting and thinking about how we should be helping our kids become more politically aware and politically active. And I always really, really love concrete actions. <laughs> I, I, I love theoretical discussions. I think they're fantastic. But at the end of the day, I need some concrete actions to go and do. <laughs> don't we all <laughs> we have such an honor to talk to you guys and and you know we're new at this we we decided to lend our talents which we can write you know and, and carrie can edit magically this is what we knew how to do and i do think this is going to be an exciting year because unfortunately the trump administration is also kind of getting a little better at it <laughs> but i think we're getting a lot better at it you know we're finding our place and we are supporting the right people so I, I think this is a, an exciting time. I, I can't wait for the midterms, you know. Heck yeah. 
Yeah. I agree. Wait. That's a good positive note to end on. So thank you for that. <laughs> thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. It was lovely to meet you. Thanks. Take care. You too. Take care. Our theme music is called Sweeter Vermouth and was composed by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. It is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 License. Our logo was created by Matthew Wefflin, expressly for two broads talking politics, and is copyright 2017. You can contact us at two broads talking politics at gmail.com or at two broads talk on Twitter. Our podcast can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and TuneIn. Please let us know if you have any trouble finding us.